today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the 3016 inch Getter Robo Getter 1 collectible robot figure. So I would like to first thank the folks over at 3-0 who was nice enough to send their early prototype figure over to me. Currently, he is on pre-order and he's not going to be released till later into the year. So I'll provide the link down below if you guys are interested in picking this mammoth 16-inch robot for yourself. Get a Robo was one of uh, Spot's earliest memories into the realm of anime. Before the likes of... Uh, you know, uh, Gotcha Man or G-Force, for example, or Voltron, there, were, there was Getter Robo. And Getter Robo was a very unique, ground-breaking series that aired from 1974 to 1975 with a total of 51 episodes. It was created by Ken Ashikawa. And the really cool thing about Getter Robo uh, was that it was comprised of vehicles, very similar to what you would have seen with later Voltron with the Lions or Vehicle Force of Voltron where it was vehicles coming together. But it was three jets. And what was neat about Ghetto Robo uh, was that three jets basically merged together to make Ghetto Robo. But depending on what vehicles merged with what order of themselves, he could produce three different modes, three different variations to his body, which was kind of neat. So like the default mode was basically usually this one, but depending on how the ships merged together, you could get variations to his body, depending on you know what monster he was fighting at the time. It was really a neat thing. And Saber Rider uh, and the Star Sheriff, and uh, again, G-Force, Voltron, and Get a Robo were all basically staples in my household when I was growing up. So to see 3-0 producing this now in a 16-inch figure, super, super excited to be having a look at this now. The three different variations to Getter Robo was the Getter 1, which was a flight combat robot. Getter 2 was a ground robot. And Getter 3 was a marine robot. So the thing with Getter Robo was, depending on their conditions, their, whether it was land, sea, or air, there was a Getter Robot designed for that task. 3-0, who spent a lot of time to produce this figure, instead not going... I would say to the root of making something that looked as if it did in the series, they went a little bit more of a realistic approach to it. And I gotta say, the end result is awesome. The paint, it's probably, I don't even hope that the camera can pick it up as well as I'm seeing in person, but the paint is fantastic. Especially when you start looking at little areas around the joints. I'll show you guys the, the areas independently, but like looking at the whole thing as a whole, it is fantastic. It's really a remarkable sight to be seen. And it is tall, 16 inches. It towers over other six scale figures that you might be have on collection. Uh, and again, it's just a fantastic looking piece. How about the first thing that we have a look at is its head. Now I will say though, um, this is also a, a, a prototype figure. This is not the final release figure, but I will say this though, there are areas to get a robo that are a little more on the fragile side. And I will say the most fragile, you can probably see right where my fingers are right here, these little side prongs that stick out from the side of robo. These are a plastic. And uh, I will say, um, getting him out of packaging, for example, getting him out of the box that he came in, I was very worried that these side uh, they're almost like needles really extending out from the sides of his head they are fragile so when you do eventually get this I would say be very careful especially these areas that they don't end up banging or you know breaking off the main coloring of Getter Robo is essentially white and then it varies depending on what mode he is in and then he has accents area areas of the red and the yellow area of his mid waist torso area the red, though, and especially around the face, you can see it there. He's got the green eyes, and he's got little blue, and it's not quite just a regular blue either. It seems like it's almost uh, like an aqua blue, metallic blue color that they used for the front of his face. You can see how posable his head is, too. I'll show you guys posability on him in a second. His head almost rotates all the way around, but it does have a stopping point. The red, though is there's probably about, I would say, three different colors of red that they've used for it. The primary or basic 
uh, undercoat red, it's almost more like a tomato red, and then they've put a darker red area around the head, and then an even darker red right at the sides where these extensions stick out from the sides of his head. The green is subtle, it's not a very bright green. It, uh, I'll show you guys other things about that in a second. The gray or off-white, I should say, is a nice added um, coloring too because that is really where you see a lot of the, the rust and stains and other things that they've painted into the figure. So yes, that's touch base on his main coloring. You see his main coloring is this white, but it's not quite white. There's a lot of le levels of paint that they've added to it, but then he's got the yellow area of his lower torso and then the accent areas of his red, of the red arms, the shoulders, the feet, and the cape, which is as impressive as the robot itself. Looking forward to showing you guys that in a second. But he really stands imposing. Uh, standing wise too, he doesn't come with a display stand, or at least this one did not come with a display stand, but he does a pretty good job of standing. Again, I would be a little careful when it comes to areas, especially if he was the fall, areas especially around the head worry me a little bit, but overall he's really, really spectacular. Let's maybe start at the bottom of the legs and we'll work our way up. As I mentioned, it is mostly a white color, but I say white, it is probably the furthest from the truth. It is white, however, you can see all the little areas right here where it's got almost, I almost want to say it's like uh, machine fluid that has rusted or it's dripped out from the areas of the panels that would have made up his armor here. And there's just this kind of gritty, grainy look that they've painted over top of it too. Areas that would be a, a pristine white. There's wear areas on the ends there that are in dark gray. Let's spin the leg slightly around here so you guys can see as well. He's got some silver accents with the red. But again, like the red, there is no area on this robot at all where that is one singular color. Every little area and crease and crevice have been colored in with a secondary wash. They've almost done a job of paneling. I don't want to say panel lining because it extends further out than just the panels themselves, but there's this dark kind of brownish wash that they've put around the creases areas. It's, cre it's trickled itself down. It's leaked itself down further past the robot. It looks like something realistic while still having an anime look to it. It's cool that 3.0 would have made this more the realistic approach rather than the just something that was taken right from the anime itself. At the time that this Robo gets released, uh, Getter Robo will feature light up eyes, which sadly does not light up on the prototype here. And he also will have a Getter, getter shooting port, which is located on the front area here too. Unfortunately, again, none of the light up options work on this particular one, but at the time that he is released, expect those light up areas to be featured. The activation switch is still actually on the prototype here. We'll just spin it around and I'll just tip it down here so you guys can see. See, there's a little switch right here. This will switch it on. And again, there, unfortunately, the electronics are not inside the Getter Robot prototype here, but this will light up when he gets released. One of the other features available on the robot too is that he does have a removable cape. And for that, we just spin it around and there's these little ports on the back here that you're just gonna wanna pull. They're just basically plug points that they pop out and you can remove the cape. I'll revisit the cape in a second so you guys can see what the back of him looks like without the cape. Though the cape really ends up hiding a lot of this back area here. 3.0 really did an extensive job on the painting, right? The back areas of where the gears or the bend points of the legs would have been, the back area of the torso, and especially the back area here of the area of his torso, like the top torso area here. This is, it's got this gunmetal gray sections to it, but you can see that still that weathering that they've added there as well. And there's a closer look at his back. You can see exactly what I'm talking about here, where it's got the red and it's got the white, but it's not just the red and the white. There's a lot 
and I mean a lot of extra weathering, little areas of rust, and areas really around the gunmetal gray too, in a darker wash. Areas where you would expect heat or exhaust to come from as well, those areas are in a darker gray wash too. To add the cape back, it's very simple. You just make sure that the plugs are available and we want to plug the back of his cape right back into the torso area. Just a little bit of pushing and they sit very easily back in place. A little bit of caution I should make though when it comes to the plugs. They're not completely circular. In fact, you can see right there how the bottom area is halved or, or flat. That's better. I'll give you a better look there. When you install or when you put the plugs back in, you got to make sure that the flat end is facing the bottom when it, you're putting it in. If not, it's not going to sit in properly and the cape's not going to stay in place. With it back on, let's get a better look at his cape. His cape is more of a burgundy color with a lot of wearing, especially the wearing near the bottom uh, section of the cape. The cape is tattered and ripped, very battle ravaged, a little puncture points in the cape. It's neat also too with the cape that they've wire framed all the individual extensions. So depending on how you want to have it posed, you can bend the cape and manipulate it. I think what I might do for Robo here is when he's eventually displayed, I might be having the cape just bent to the side as if it's blowing in the wind there. And just pose it maybe slightly like this, maybe even curl these up. Oh, that, that would look very cool. Just bring these up like that. Getter Robo's accessories will also include. Yeah, for accessories, Getter Robo also comes with these Getter Tomahawks. And they are large. In fact, they're about half the height of Robo himself. They're not heavy though. I will say that the Tomahawks aren't heavy. They feel a little bit lighter, which will make things a lot easier when he's holding them because there's no peg point or any area that looks like it would attach itself to the inside of the hands. So holding these, he's relying only on the articulation of his fingers to keep them in place. Which is really a perfect segue then to show you guys how his fingers work. His fingers are each individually articulated, one in the lower knuckle, one in the mid knuckle, and then he's got a ball joint at the top of the, each finger. Above and beyond, of course, the ball joint that's going to be residing in his wrist, there's a lot of posability in Robo's hands. Oh, and did we also forget the very large blades at the ends of his forearms? Yeah, very menacing. They're not sharp. They're also a plastic, very similar density to the Tomahawks. Painted very nicely though in the silver and gunmetal outlining the bottom base of them. But to get the tomahawks in place, just slide it down or I guess the easier aspect or the easiest way to do it would be put it around his fingers and then just close his fingers around the tomahawk. And you'll also want to make sure that you bring the thumb around, close that up. I wish these were maybe magnetized, just to give an, a little bit ad added uh, stability to the Tomahawks. But you can see, he holds it very well. So, that's what he looks like with the Tomahawks in hands. They, they can sit a little on the looser side because his fingers are trying to grip around them. But I think he can still pose them fairly well. You might have to, again, just, just adjust the fingers ever so slightly to get them to stay in place. I guess as a small critique, if there was a way that they could have been magnetized or there would have been a, like a little clip on the inside of his palms just so that the tomahawks would have sat more secure. Again, the fingers do a pretty good job of grasping around the handles, but as you can see, you're, you have to adjust them ever so slightly to get the tomahawks to sit in place. Get a Robo features over 40 points of articulation. And I found it was easier to probably show you the articulation with the cape removed, just so I can show you all the individual joints. Let's start at the top, and again, we'll work our way down. Get a Robo features a ball joint 
And it seems like he has a double ball joint, one at the base of the head that allows that pivot point there. But then he's got a secondary ball joint that sits at the base of the neck where you can get added articulation that way. And then the neck itself also rotates. It doesn't appear that it's a ball joint. It just has a straight swivel. For his torso, his torso is on two ball joints, one at the top, dividing this section off. There's a ball joint there. And you can see how far that ball joint tips the torso back. Then he's got a secondary ball joint that sits in the cavity of his lower torso. And it's got full posability options there as well. You can pivot it left and right. You can move it up and down. Again, the same could be said for the top torso area of his body. You get full rotation there. Not as much rotation, I would say, as what of the lower torso. But you can see how much posability options he has available. His shoulders are separate from one another. Uh, it, well, in, in the fact that the shoulder pad area here is its own separate joint, which at least when you move the arms as they ratchet out, these shoulder areas don't get in the way. That's so, I, I, I like that a lot. The arms ratchet out, but they are a little on the clicky side. So just having some a little caution here, especially seeing as this isn't the final release of the figure. As you can see, the arms do ratchet out and they do ratchet back and forth, but a little, again, on that clicky side. When it comes to the elbows, the elbows are double hinged, being that there's a hinge right at the bicep area, and then there's a secondary hinge in the forearm area. As for the hands, well, we've already kind of touched base on the hands, but the hands have a ball joint. I haven't seen this before on when it comes to articulation. The ball joint in the hand is actually further up here rather than at the wrist. So this whole section moves, and I guess they've done it so that as the arm moves or the hand moves out, you can see the more of the inner workings where the wrist would be connected to the forearm. And then as for the fingers, the fingers, as we already had a look at, are independently ball jointed. They're ball jointed at the base, and then they're hinged in the two sets of knuckles, in the knuckle at the base and the knuckle in the lower or the end of each finger or thumb, they are articulated each individually. Finally, when it comes to his legs, his legs work the same way as his arms. They ratchet forward, they ratchet back, and they ratchet out. There appears to be maybe a slight swivel at the top of the thigh, but I'm not gonna mess too much with that. He then he has two joints in the knees, one joint at the top, one joint at the bottom, and a full range of movement that way. Also again, it seems like they wanna slightly swivel at the, at the lower leg, but that's likely due more so to the way it was built. Finally, the feet. The feet are hinged. They pivot or allow for a pivot left and right. But then also the toe itself, as you can see underneath, there's the underside of the, the foot. The toe also has its own independent hinge. And couple that with the joints in the legs that we've already had a look at in the torso and arms, you can get some really dramatic poses with Robo here. Yes, again, I mean, for 40 points of articulation, you could probably do a little bit more of a dynamic pose than what Spot's got right here, but you can kind of see the makings of what could be a very super poseable, yet still super detailed figure. As Spot had mentioned in the beginning of this video, Getter Robo was probably my earliest introduction into the world of a uh, manga series. Uh, Ken Ishokawa uh, really introduced fans to something that later on, really a lot of series can pay thanks to Get a Robo for introducing the idea of merging vehicles to a gestalt. By today's standards, it's nothing new. I mean, we've seen it with Voltron. We saw it later now with Power Rangers, but all can really pay thanks to Get a Robo for what he introduced. Um, the show itself, still one of my fondest memories. I used to watch, I think every, I want to say every Saturday afternoon, it used to be on TV and, uh, just have been a fan ever since. 3-0 just did a fantastic, and I say fantastic probably a lot, but truthfully they did a fantastic job on him. 
taking something out of the show and giving it probably a more real world, realistic looking approach. I think he couldn't have turned out better. Um, probably I would say maybe I wish the Tomahawks could have been held a little bit better. There was a way that they could have been attached to the inner of the, of the palms, but super thrilled to now have this in my collection. Uh, as Spotted mentioned, he is pr currently on a pre-order. He is not released yet. So if you guys are interested in adding Get a Robot, if you grew up with him as much as uh, and loved him as much as I did, uh, you can click the link down below, and uh, you can you can pre-order him. And a lot of other online st uh, stores will also have this guy currently on pre-order. Big Bad Toy Store's got him on pre-order. So there's a lot of other places uh, that are uh, that are going to be, of course, having this guy uh, available for pre-order. If you get a chance, though, I would say definitely add this guy to your collection. Today's collectible spot, we were having a look at the 3016 inch, 16 inches of the Ghetto Getter Robo collectible super figure, and he is super. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots in your way. Thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time.